Today, the biggest threat that our country faces is terrorism. City after city of our country have been subjected <clears throat> to terrorist attacks and thousands of innocent people have got killed. We have to fight this war against terrorism. For the last 11 years, I have been closely watching events of terrorist acts for six years in Assam, followed by five years in Kashmir. And what I found was a sort of lack of political will to deal with this menace. Vote bank considerations are paramount. National security <clears throat> takes a back seat. In the late 60s, Mr. B.K. Nehru, a member of the royal dynasty, was governor of Assam. He writes in his autobiography, nice guys finish second saying that he and B.P. Chalia, the chief minister, and old congressman, were most concerned about infiltration from then East Pakistan. <coughs> he proposed certain measures and recommended to them, both he and the chief minister, that certain other measures should be taken. He was told by Delhi that he must stop all that nonsense. And that was the time when his own cousin, Indra Gandhi, was the Prime Minister. And Mr. Bekin Nehru, in his autobiography, laments, saying that Chaliha belonged to the old generation of Congress, for whom national interests were more important than party interests. The new generation of congressmen think otherwise. Can there be a stronger indictment of this policy of overlooking a major threat to our security for sake of vote bank consideration? Thirty years later, when I was governor of Assam, I sent a 42-page report to the President of India pointing out the dangers from unabated influx of illegal immigrants from Bangladesh, not only to the demography of Assam, but to our national security. U.S. government, United Front government was in power at that time. Soon after, NDA government came to power. One of my main recommendations was repeal of IMDT Act. But this could not be done because the NDA did not have the requisite majority in Raj Sabha. The matter went up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court struck down the IMDT Act, but by now, UPA government was in power. IMDT Act was brought back through the back door by amending the Foreigners Act. That shows the lack of will to deal with the problem. There is also a comic opera connected with this. On 10th of April, 1992, the then Chief Minister of Assam, Hitesha Saikia, told the State Assembly 
that there were three million Bangladeshi illegal immigrants in SF. He was pressurized to change his statement. Two days later, at a press conference, he declared that there is not a single illegal migrant from Bangladesh in Assam. This not only happened 10, 20 years ago, but it has happened recently also. <coughs> On 10th May 1997, the then Union Home Minister, Indrajit Gupta, told the Parliament that there are one crore illegal migrants from Bangladesh in India. On 15th of July 2004, the Union Minister of State for Home, Sri Jaiswal, said that there are 1.2 crore illegal migrants in India. The Prime Minister was visiting Gohati the next day, perhaps under local pressure. He told the press in Gohati that those figures were not authentic. And a week later, Jaiswalji told the Parliament that he had given those figures on the basis of hearsay. <coughs> My experience in Jammu and Kashmir was something similar. <coughs> in the last three years of my tenure there, I was happy to serve with a chief minister with whom I had complete identity of views. I am referring to Gulam Nabi Azad. In fact, I was associated with Kashmir from day one, 27th October 1947. And I had interacted and met almost every chief minister from Sheikh Abdullah to Mufti Muhammad Sayyid. And I can say that in Gulam Nabi Azad, we had a chief minister, very secular and totally nationalist. I was not interested in his political views. The tragedy was that his own party undermined his position because it succumbed to blackmail from communal and anti-national elements. And wholly unnecessary controversy of, or a non-issue was raised, I'm referring to the Baltal land controversy, which put the clock back and at the end of it, we went back to whatever had been done earlier, and now it will take some time for the state to recover from the setback it has suffered. And all this because of vote bank politics. National security is something far more serious. It affects the survival of the nation. As someone associated with security for a long, long time, <coughs> both for 40 years in the army and my civil appointments, I can say without hesitation <coughs> that Advani ji, cutting across political parties and ideologies, is the tallest political leader of our country who can mobilize the nation in this war against terror. 